G'day folks, I'm back and I've got the diff out and I have swapped the gears over. So we've gone from 3.7 down to 3, well, 0.2 of a change, a tenth, down to 3.5. Oh, this is, look, this has come together. I'm so happy with it. I'm not a diff. I don't muck around with diffs. But uh, if you do a little bit of research and uh, before you sort of attempt it, it's, it's not that hard. It really is not that hard. All I had to do, guys, was swap the bearing over on the pinion shaft, the one that butts up against the gear. There's two actual gear. Well, there's actually three. You've got this pilot end bearing. And then you've got two, two bearings opposing sort of each other with a crushable spacer and a couple of spacers to go with it. Uh, I reused the spacer because I kept the bearings and I did a torque check as I was backing this off. And I actually, believe it or not, this only had 100 pound on it. So maybe... Maybe the crush bearing has sort of collapsed a little bit more. But we gave it 160, probably about 170 pound uh, on this nut that does the uh, yoke up. That puts pressure on the two bearings, which crushes the uh, that crush washer a little bit every time. So it felt really nice. It was just... You can feel it. If you've worked with stuff like that, you know, and especially with trailer bearings and any sort of bearing, if those tapered ones, you can feel whether they're too tight or too loose. And before I even pulled it apart, uh, it feels exactly the same, even though I've put a little bit more tension on it. Um, I'm really happy with that. And... I put the uh, kept all the bearings. Obviously, didn't have to change this over except for the crown wheel. And yeah, it's all come together beautifully. I had these are the original marks, so they were threaded up here, uh, timed up here. So as we're tightening this up, we're actually pushing pushing that gear across into the pinion. So be, this because. It may be slightly different. I had to give it uh, three extra clicks and then I backed it off the other side. Uh, here too. So we've gone three clicks that way. So to allow the to allow the whole lot sort of to move across. They say six to ten thou backlash. And I've got bang on six. I'm quite actually happy with the way it all sort of lined up. You probably can't really see it. It sort of it tapers in there nice. It's a, got a good spread and it's fairly even across the uh, crown wheel. I ended up having to put in... I had a 16 thou spacer originally. Um, isn't it weird, you know? When I first put it back together with, with that spacer in it, it was... The bearing was actually, not the bearing, but where it was mating, it was up here a little bit, sort of on the inside of the radius. Then I took the spacer out thinking that it's going to move it back this way and I'll get a little bit more back across here. No, it actually goes the opposite. So I got myself a shim kit and I've got a 10 thou packer in there now, as well as my 16 that I've originally had in there and that actually brought it across uh, onto a more even across the uh, the gear the tooth then you adjust like I said with your screws because they're threaded threaded sort of spaces and um, yeah I had to sort of bring it across a little bit extra than original so I suppose, you know, 2.2 .2 of a gear change 
you know, it's sort of, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit thicker. It's just slightly different design. So you just have to, I had to sort of creep it across a little bit. So, but it all worked really well. I'm really happy with it, with the... It's excellent. So that's ready to go back in. And, uh, oh, geez, I can't wait. That's going to, that'll probably change, uh, well, I'm guessing at least 300 revs possibly more so i'm equating to probably another 20 kilometers an hour faster at that same given uh, revs that's all i really need at this at this moment i mean if it's still down the track i feel it's still a little bit under geared i'll go to a three four i'll just keep going in increments until i'm sort of um, i get the sweet spot but i think this one this gear change will make a big difference and I think it'll get me the uh, PB that I'm after. Because I'm only, these tracks are very small, guys. So we don't, well, I'm not tapped out for too long, if you understand what I mean. I'm not, um, they're not huge long straights. And I still want, I still want that short little bit of gearing uh, to give me some good acceleration, especially out of corners. Even though I've got the boost, it's still, it's still nice to not overload it up too much, the uh, gearbox. Got to remember the taller the gearing you go, the more stress it's going to put on everything too. So you've got to be mindful of that. So it's sort of a give and take gear ratio, this one. Excellent. Can't wait. Well, I've been busy aside from that too. I had a little issue with the carb, folks. When I first went, when I uh, was down at the track last, after... The second race or third race, I noticed it started to, when I went into, came on to boost or put the foot down, sorry, I had this sort of dead sort of feeling. It felt like there was a bit of a, like a flat spot in it. And uh, so I pulled the carb off just to check it. I didn't know if there was any dirt or whatever. And before I actually pulled it off, I was mucking around with the uh, accelerator pump, just checking it. And believe it or not, on the secondaries, I wasn't getting any squirt of fuel that came in from the squirters. What had happened, the little umbrella check valve that goes where the pump is, it stops as the pump, accelerator pump, the little piece in under the bowl. When you press the pump down, the check valve closes, so you've got a little reservoir of fuel in there, to shoot into the squirters, well, they, that was broken off, and um, I wasn't getting getting any squirting action. And uh, so, yeah, I took it off, and and uh, I replaced front and rear. I don't know if the E85 sort of attacked it and uh, shortened its life, but that's something just to keep an eye on. I've got a heap of them, so that's handy. I um I gave the header pipes a nice coat of uh, header paint. That was my other little job I did. Did them both and I've had it running to cure it in just gently, gently, because if you leave it running for too long on fresh paint, you can burn them off and, yeah, they don't look real good. But yeah, I've had that going two or three times this engine and it's had, yeah, like I said, three heat cycles. And I gave that little, this little return, this is where the original fuel pump mounted, the diaphragm runs off the uh, the cam um, I ended up uh, taking that off and sealing it. I had a little leak in there and I used some T-Rex that stuff I've been ranting on about for years I used some of that on it and uh, oh, it looks really nice just tidied it up I like to keep it looking nice guys I mean it's not a show car but I like to have it looking nice and just keep it fresh looking and I fixed this too. I had a terrible time for years. I had a little weep just in that part there. And uh, this had a uh, hump in it. So I flattened him off. Once again, a bit of T-Rex around there. And uh, it's not leaking. So that's fantastic. Love it. And one other thing. I had the charge pipe come off a couple of times down there. Now that I've gone up in boost a little bit, uh, this started to play up. And I ended up buying two new fittings and uh, they've got a lot more flex in it now so a lot more movement to allow for the engine to to sort of kick over and, uh, yeah looks good 
Looks nice and clean. Very happy with it. All right, folks, well, it's just a little quick update. I've got my utility down, the, the little project that I'm, I'm uh, in, going to embark on. So I'll do a video on that very soon. And one other little thing, guys. I've got a little surprise coming for the next vid I do, but I'll let it out now because I'm, I just can't keep a secret. <laughs> I've bought another little manifold for this. I won't be doing it straight away. See how we go later in the year with it or over my winter time. But it's a Peter Michaels uh, high-rise manifold for the early model heads. Love the old school stuff, guys. I think this little manifold will be an absolute rip snorter on the uh, 355. They're designed for the 308 cubic inch. But um, I think on this little engine, it's just going to be incredible. Apparently, they gained 50 horsepower over a, a performance dual plane manifold. So this is a single low sort of rise manifold. But um, this is the other one I'm, I'm getting is a high rise. It's, I don't know how much higher they are. I'd be guessing they're probably another 30 inch and a half higher maybe. I don't know if they're two inches higher. At least an inch, between an inch and two inches higher. And uh, yeah, it's a good old school one it is. So I've got that. I've been wanting one for years and uh, I've got it. Now she's coming in the mail and uh, we'll do a video on that. And uh, I'll do a little bit of research on it too and look into the history of it. And uh, I'll talk about it too, guys. So yeah, well, I hope everyone's all right now. What's going on in the world? It's... Uh, it's pretty unbelievable. Um, I'm not going to go on about it too much because uh, it's uh, something you guys are going to find out very soon. It's just incredible. Just know one thing, everything's going to work out. Believe it or not, it's actually a good thing what's going to happen. It's going to really change the way we we live and in a really positive way. So uh, when things break... And it all becomes a little bit more uh, common knowledge. I'll, I'll dive into it a bit more, guys. But uh, it's all good here. It's all good. Just just chilling along at the moment. Still on Christmas holidays. Sort of. I've got to go back tomorrow and do a little bit. But uh, I'm, I've, I've definitely slowed down in life. And uh, I'm enjoying the finer things in life. All right, folks. Well, I'll put one up soon. I hope yous are all well. Take care. I'll catch you later.